What are pro forma financial statements? Well, to begin with, pro forma financial statements are, as the name implies, financial statements, but they are created with the purpose of projecting what will happen in the future. Generally, a company creates financial statements to give some snapshot or picture of what has taken place that has happened in the past leading up to the present so that you can get a good idea of the financial situation of the company. Pro forma financial statements are more of a prediction so that anyone creating or using these financial statements can get a sense of the company's objectives, what it believes it will accomplish, where it's going. Okay, so how do you create the pro forma financial statements? Well, there are generally three types of financial statements that you're creating. First, the balance sheet. Uh, the balance sheet records your assets, your liabilities, and your owner's equity. So if you have a project or you're starting a new business and you're creating a pro forma balance sheet, you're going to first identify all of the assets that are being contributed to the company. This will be the starting point for your owner's equity. Two, any debts assumed or any loans taken out that you're accounting for uh, at the start of the project or at the beginning of the business, you will record those in liabilities. Now, you do not record them in liabilities until the point in time in which you believe you will incur these. So balance statements are generally uh, a snapshot at a given point in time. So if you include a potential liability, you believe that you have a, you're going to pull on a hundred thousand dollar line of credit and you're going to pull out the entire amount, uh, you would record this as a projected balance sheet statement with this hundred thousand dollars recorded as a liability and the hundred thousand dollars in cash that you have as an asset or whatever you purchase with the cash, such as property, plant, equipment, things like that, you would record that as an asset. And again, you will project as to when you will incur these expenses, when you will make these purchases, when you will contribute this capital. As the company proceeds along, any profits will also increase assets in the form of cash generally, uh, or other assets that you purchase with the money, or uh, and it will increase on the other side, the owner's equity, that is the money that you leave into the business. Uh, if you believe that you'll pull money out of the business, this will reduce the owner's equity commensurately and reduce the cash uh, that you've distributed from the business. So once again, that's how the balance sheet works. The income statement is what you project to happen over a year. Uh, it is also called the profit and loss statement, and that secondary name kind of tells what it is. You are projecting all of your revenues over a given period of time. When you're starting a new business and you're applying for a loan, the financial statement most relevant to the loan application is your projections with regard to revenues and expenses. Uh, the lender would want to see what you expect to be the revenues so that you can pay back whatever principal and interest payments are due on the loan taken. So you would project out over a given period of time, generally uh, 12 months, month by month, then the second year, quarter by quarter, and then the third year, uh, the entire year's projection altogether. The further out you get, the more tenuous it gets, so you would add less specificity there uh, month by month uh, or quarter by quarter as you as you go out. So with that being said, the income statement, once again, your revenues are going to be based upon sales, uh, and you will identify some uh, sales price, the products that you will be offering or services that you'll be offering, and the projections for the amount of product or services rendered or sold. Okay, and this will result in, again, a revenue figure. Now your expenses are going to be uh, split into two types, your fixed expenses and your variable expenses. Fixed expenses are going to remain constant regardless of how much you sell or how many hours of service you render, where variable expenses are going to vary with the level of uh, productivity or production that you have. So if you sell more products, you're going to have more cost of goods, right? So the cost of goods would therefore be a variable expense because you're only incurring those expenses or costs 
if you sell the product. So once again, you would make projections with regard to the goods or services you are going to sell. You would identify the expenses associated with that as variable, and then you would uh, identify the fixed expenses and project. If you are going to, say, expand your business at some point and you're going to move to a larger location and your rent will go up or your insurance uh, premiums will go up or your property taxes will go up, these are higher fixed expenses that you will account for along and along. If you are go going to acquire new services like uh, renting new equipment, uh, purchasing or financing more equipment, uh, paying for uh, other services that are going to be routine payments, again, you would account for these as fixed payments. Together, this revenue minus expenses gives your projected profits or losses for a given period of time. Now, any losses are going to be recorded at the end, end of the year or at the end of the period in the balance sheet. So that will thus reduce the amount of capital once that money has been accounted for and thus potentially reduce on the right hand side, uh, you either incurring liabilities or uh, reducing the owner's equity in the balance sheet. So you can see how the income statement results flow through to the balance sheet at a given point or period of time. Uh, because, you know, once again, you make profits, those profits are retained, it will move up owner's equity, and those retained profits will be an asset that you record in the balance sheet. So these two things are connected together. Uh, generally, I recommend starting with the income statement because that, once again, is what is going to create the current situation for the balance sheet. And then lastly, the cash flow statement. This is a projection of how much liquid cash you are going to need uh, to make your payments over a given period of time. So if you've recorded uh, cash on hand uh, in the balance sheet and you recorded liabilities and in the income statement you've projected what expenses you are going to incur during a period, oftentimes those expenses are not actually paid when they are recorded and oftentimes revenue is not actually received until a later period of time. So with that being said, your income statement will record uh, your expected revenues and your expected expenses, but your cash flow statement is going to be a picture of the actual payment and the actual receipt of cash, nothing else, no effects for things like uh, depreciation uh, or um, deferred expenses or prepaid expenses that you might have. These things, uh, while they do affect your income that you would record, it does not actually result in an outlay of cash or receipt of cash. So you would identify the things that affect the receipt of cash and once again, uh, project those. You can actually go through the income statement and identify the things that you are absolutely certain will result in a cash outflow at that period of time or cash inflow at that period of time. And that will be what you record in your cash flow statement. The cash flow statement is very helpful for helping you understand whether the company can meet its liquidity or cash needs at a given point in time. So that's why the cash flow statement is, is very important. Generally, it's uh, less used in terms of future projections than the income statement, which contains all of the transactions. But once again, it does serve a very important uh, purpose. So in a nutshell, that is how you use and create pro forma financial statements.